Good morning, everyone. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hand this morning, but I could host it because I'm going to frown. Was anybody remembering that what my last message was about? Today is going to be a continuation, kind of Pandovira. So, in I could host I'm going to clean you in recap, even from what I heard. That was about Elijah, um, the amazing work that he had done, amazing victories. What I already heard, I got the crow for God on the even died. And then came I by a point where he wanted to give up. I'm weird. I'm weird and out. I'm weird. I'm weird. The talk for we can hear for how you going weird. I heard. Viel victories believed, and vielleicht nicht so sehr viel believed, and nicht so, nicht so sehr viel gesehen, wo Menschen sich Trainer Gott reindeuten. So, er kann sein, bitte, wo, äh, da kann ein Mensch, but du bring to want to give up. Knowing everything that you've done, you have poured out your life for the people. And du hast nicht gesehen, that there's any fruit growing from it. I can see how a person wants to give up. I can zelts feel move to Ivas where I thought the same thing. I just wanted to give up. Seemed like all the thing about Anna died. It the mind all in us. And I can so I feel effort and verschiedene uh, Dinge nan down, but to not see anything from it. That that. That I know what what began hard, or I know with Vira Ikum, or what am I asked? So there's always those times when Satan will come to you, and he's going to want you to give up. But why? Why does he want you to give up? I think sometimes he probably sees a few things that you don't. And our Konzan. He can probably see or know the victory that's about to come. I see it now. That I'm on hope when you say the the greatest trials come right before victory or right after victory. Right before victory is when you want to give up, just because the house fight hold battle gone smite and. Cost is sign that that there is any victory, but cost is sign. But would you bask in the conf, and then you want to give up? Or on the other hand, when the dark mountain does, dark hell does, then he wants to come back and pry you with what you've done, pry you with the achievements that you've made. When in reality, all glory goes right back to God. So do then try staying there and so for us to watch out for. That we don't want to give up right before victory, and that we don't pride ourselves after victory. Today, I want to continue on a little bit in Second Kings. I'm going to start in uh, chapter four. I will not all the stories listen because I have uh, lots of references. What I me up to Stephen Hood, but I'm just going to read one reference a little bit. But the one that I'm just going to touch on a little bit. This is. Part of the account of Elijah or Elisha. So had Elijah given up? We do not know. We do not read in God's word at any place how Elisha would have gotten the message or that the uh, prophetic um, that 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 it would have been transferred from Elijah to Elisha. Vote in transaction would you see it? Then we don't see, we don't read it. But in this account, since Elijah, after he was strengthened, he continued on. He didn't give up. He continued on, and he encountered a man named Elisha. And so during so, that prophet ship got transferred to Elisha. And in Second Kings, and I, I don't know how far it goes. I, I'm sure that there's still a lot more. I haven't come across all of the things, all of the points that he had done. 
wo heißt ich was, wo heißt ähm, mein Bier was. Aber so wie ich das vorher wo, wo gesehen habe, ich habe mich so hast, ich habe so sieben Points abgeschrieben, wo er hat performed um, Miracles. Now it wasn't, we got, we got to remember, it wasn't him. It was God through him. Because one man decided to continue on. One man decided to continue on. Touches more lives than you can imagine. Tower for Stone. One man decided to continue on, not to give up, touches more lives than you can imagine. One of the first things that Elisha did was he encountered a woman that had a great debt. Her husband had passed away. She had two sons. This we could read in 2 Kings chapter Four verses one through seven. I'm not going to read it. I just want to kind of recap what they're in Zahaf. And it is where her debtors are wanting to take her sons from her and uh, to, to pay her debt. Whatever it is. You can, you, you can read it yourself at some point. But he says, Elijah tells her to go and gather as many jars as she can. Empty jars at that. She had a small jar that had oil in it. Once she had gathered all these empty jars, empty containers, whichever you will, he told her to take from that jar that had oil in, and and the other jars and then and the oil continued to flow and continued to flow until all the jars were filled. Where did the oil come from? The jar that she had was not enough to fill all these other containers. But Elisha told her to do this and it continued on just like that. When the last jar had filled, the mother t says to one of the sons, go get another jar, and he says, there is none more. And that is when the oil stopped flowing. Do we see what happened here? Elisha said to the Zephri, in doing this, by selling that extra oil that she had gotten, would be enough to pay her debt and to live in the time of famine that was in the land at the time. Would this woman have done this if somebody hadn't told her to do so? Would she have, would she have had figured it out on her own, come up with the idea of trying something like that on her own? Highly doubtful. But here and so, God used Elisha to tell this woman what to do to save her from her debtors and to save her from the famine in the land. The second we see where Elisha, traveling through a land often, he would stop in at a certain uh, couple's house. He would get refreshments. This couple, they were in Amamamat, is what providing that, and there comes a time when, so this is a Shunammite, Shunammite woman. She decides, or she talks to her husband and says, um, where he can come and rest. He has a place of his own uh, for refreshments, for, for sleeping, what am I asked. And in return, he is so thankful he wants to do something for this couple. Isn't that how we often are too? When somebody like on and the besondere of he treated half that we sometimes don't feel worthy of, that we try to figure out a way to pay them back. 
we try to figure out a way that we can show gratitude for what they've done for us. Well, Elisha was the same way here. servant. There's a frigum freon what are feeling that. Have something far down for all the hospitalities that she had shown to them. Verses 8 through 12 talks about what this uh, Shunammite woman had done for Elisha. Verses 13 through, through 19 talks about Elisha's return, his, his favor returned to her and her husband. So correct so between 13 and 19 during so would be fun lesson where he sends his servant to Margon Freya what are feeling that should he speak to the king on her behalf should he do whatever they they, they need to a couple things up and she says no she doesn't want anything in return but fang believe you on somebody half on flight in a besondere wache halten and we waren it was some way. We want to return the favor in some way. And then we get the response. No, no, it's, it's all good. We, we're just helping each other. What I'm going to ask, right? And I'm thinking on in light what I'm saying. Don't let the chain of love end with you. So that's like a feeling more. Would it crack hand come that? If someone helps you, do you not but just pass it on to wherever you see a need. Just pass it on. It does not have to be directed straight back to you. But that's what he did. She didn't want anything. She didn't need anything. But then came the servant tray and said, actually, she has no son. That gives Elisha the idea, hey, I can, I can bless this family that way. And he did, so he called her to his room. She came and he told her that next time, or this time and next year, then she was going to have a son. And what does the woman say? In the second half of verse 16 says, And she said, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. It says that her husband was of old age. It doesn't say the age what she was, but it does say that her husband was of old age. Dot dot thing in the last half of verse 14. Well, I'll read the whole verse of 14. So he said, what then is there to be done for her? And uh, Gehazi answered, actually she has no son and her husband is old. It's right there we see that. Verse 16, she says, do not lie to your maidservant. Her husband being old, at this point not having any children, probably have wanted children forever. And probably came to the point where Maybe, God, maybe it is not God's will. Here she would feel um, probably confused and probably deceived had this not come true. Probably the hope that must have been within her and she did not just want false hope. She did not want false hope. Don't tell me something that may not happen. But it happened exactly that way. She had a son next year when he came through. And uh, it, it tells us that this, that this uh, boy grew and in verse, yeah, verse 18, and the child grew. Now it happened one day that, that he went out to his father, to the reapers, 
And he said to his father, my head, my head. So something perceived he that he had some head issues. Then the father said to the servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees until noon, and then he died. How would that feel? Probably wanted a child all of your life. Finally, the promise happened that she conceived and she had this, had a child. And he was not very old yet, and he passes away. There could have been those thoughts, I would have been better off without him. I would have been better off without this man promising me things that would end this way. We don't know quite what they thought of. But what we do know is that she knew where to go. She knew who to turn to. Verse 21, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the men of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and, and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not, do not slacken the, the pace for, for me unless I tell you. And so he, and so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant Gehazi, look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child or with the child? And she, and she answered. So notice now she's not answering. She's not talking to the man of God. She's not talking to Elijah yet. She is talking to the servant that Elijah had sent on ahead. She answered and said, it is well. Now when she had come to the man of God at the, at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress in the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she, so, so she said, did I ask for a son? Did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Here we have it. She felt deceived. Then he said to Gehazi, Get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. It, and if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As my Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead, on ahead of them and laid the staff on his face of the, of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, there was a, there was a child lying dead on his bed. He went in therefore shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and laid on on the child, put his mouth on on his mouth, 
his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house. When I read that, I, I, I read this, I don't know, a week ago maybe, and I read this again this morning. His eye in that he returned and he walked back and forth in the house. And that brought memories back to me from Nachfar Tit what I could get I knew that I needed it and I can kind of feel I could kind of kind of had a uh, what do you call it memory from the past but anyway So and then he went, and again he went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he call, called Gehazi and said, "Call the Shunammite woman." So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, "Pick up your son." So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked him up. She picked up her son and went out. First, by the prophesying, by his prophesying that she would have a son, she had a son. But he had passed away, and he raised him from the dead through God, or, or God through him. Vida Zoevi, that Elisha purifies a pot of stew, it's directly behind us. Um, he feeds a hundred men. Elisha heals Naaman's leprosy. Elisha made the axe head to float. So on the story goes, on and on. Would all of this have happened had Elijah given up? We keep coming back to the same thing. What do we do when we want to give up? I think the first thing that we need to do is just calm down, let God strengthen us through His Word. He does say that He is the living bread. He is the living water. Those are the two essential things that we need for life, for strength. Let him refresh us and continue on because you and I don't know who's following in our footsteps. If I give up, how many people are going to give up because they saw me give up? If I continue on, how many people are going to be, in, be touched by perseverance? I think there is something for me, Bizonda, to understand. Especially in those times when, when you feel like anything you do don't make a difference. And think back, who's watching? Think back, who's watching? There's more people watching than you will ever realize. I have not to be in. I got to thank you for the wood. I thank you for the strength that what you give and has to continue on. I thank you that you do best. You have not given us a spirit to what the up given well hardy does. When you work on fang does, you make that sure mountain that that has the resources and all the stones to finish that work. And her God help on us besonders that when we come to the point where we want to give up, me specifically, that you will. Strengthen me through your word, through the bread of life, 
in the living water, the fountain of water that you give. Her God help us, help me besonders, don't put to zen for the what you do in house for me, knowing that I have eternal life through you and there is no place of giving up. You didn't give up, you finished that work and help me to follow in those footsteps so that whoever follows me may also continue through and persevere, her God. Versions wieder sehnen an dem Wut, versions ansporn an dem Wut, um auch dann zu reden and auch uh, uns challenging to go and make a difference in the world for your sake. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.